then what we will what we have pn hat and the pm hat i have minus j omega m plus omega n t right and i have the tau pn hat and the pm hat conjugate minus j omega m minus omega n t I multiply this to that, and I have P and conjugate exponent, uh, multiplying this one, this one, P m had exponential plus j omega m minus omega uh, Okay, minus omega n t plus I have p n uh, p m hat conjugate uh, okay j omega m plus omega m t. Okay, this is plus and this is uh, omega m, so minus, and this is p n hat p m <coughs> E, P and P M conjugate so uh, yeah that is correct and this one is a P and hat P M and it should be minus okay it's so all done now these two terms is oscillating with the frequency omega m plus omega n and that is that is oscillating more uh, faster than this frequency that is omega m minus omega n right right also this one has a maximum when omega m equal to omega n. When omega m equal to omega m, this one is p m magnitude square, and that is a p m magnitude square. Okay. So. I can write approximately this is 1 over 4 t and t when n equal m this is p m mag magnitude square and the summing for all m and I have 2 so I have a 2 over here so I have one half magnitude square for all for every m. In other words, the mean square average of sound pressure is the same as summing the magnitude of each frequency component. Right? So mean square average is a sum of magnitude square of each frequency component. That is very com convenient. That means mean square average of this sound pressure is summing the magnitude of scale of each frequency component. Okay, this is magnitude and this is magnitude. What that says, 
the mean square average of this pressure is magnitude square plus magnitude square plus magnitude square plus divided by 2. That is average. So I can say mean square average of total sound pressure is sum of average of each frequency component. Isn't it beautiful? OK. Up to now, it's just mathematical description of the strange equality. But if you see this in terms of signal processing we are doing, then it reveals a lot of practical importance. For instance, as illustrated in the picture, OK, I have time signal, PT. And what I do is I take a Fourier transform. OK, and then that Fourier transform would give me P magnitude of P1, P2, P3. 1, 2, 3 stands for the frequency omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. Right? And then I'll, I can get the magnitude scale component at each frequency that we call usually spectrum. Right? So mean scale average sound pressure is just taking 10 log 10 of this things with respect to P scale reference. And that is this. And if I, if I, if I do this one third octave band, octave band frequency, then it may look like this. So SPL, our total sound pressure is summing all this, and then divide by p square reference and take 10 log 10. That will give me sound pressure level. OK? That's what actually is, that's what sound pressure level meta actually do. When you, when you have a sound pressure level meta, you, use, you have a two knobs, or many knobs actually, on and off, on off knob. And but you, you have a fast mode and a slow mode. The fast and slow stands for which value of capital T you are taking. OK? And then sound pressure level meta does take this. It has to operate this, P square T, as I illustrate over there. And, that, and, and then indicate uh, the decibel scale you feel. OK? So if I summarize, we understood how to actually calculate or measure SPL, sound pressure level, Kim Sung Hwa, right? Hmm? Hmm. Right? Yeah, you know how to measure SPL. And also, we understand that the, our auditory system is sensitive to frequency scale. Therefore, when we actually calculate the SPL for noise, we have to somehow use, take into account the dependency of our auditory system on frequency. Therefore, we often use A, B, C weighting to, to take into account the, our auditory system's frequency dependency.